right, today I'm mm. delighted to be joined by, I see, two of the sexiest men in whiskey. <laughs> well, you've got number, say, number one. Well, I, mean, yeah, and then I mean, I didn't want to specify. Top you know, 100, to maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, two obviously legends of whiskey. We have oh. legendary whiskey writer Charlie McLean and Mr. Sassanach. Yes, Mr. Yeah, Sassanach. Mr. Sassanach, himself. and obviously star of the Outlander series as well. Thank you. Delighted to have you Thank here, you for Sam. Having me. Um, for those that are unfamiliar with the Sassanach brand, mm. It's not just whiskey, you've got gin and you've got big plans for the future. What we sort do. of ethos behind? Yeah, yeah, we celebrate Scottish spirits. You know, okay. I'm a huge, obviously, I guess, fan or ambassador of Scotland. Sure. I love Scotland. I love what we produce. I love not only the landscape, but of course the spirits. And um, I just think, you know, all of the the botanicals we have in, in terms of gin, but also the whiskies, which this man is a legend of, mm. it, they're infinite, aren't they? And, and we could sit here all day and taste different whiskies. However, I feel like you're about to serve us something slightly I mean, untold. I mean, slightly I'm mysterious. Yes. About this. We'll, we'll Someone that, mentioned so. English whiskey, which not to cast dispersion. Has it been a bitter taste in your mouth before you well, even started? I've, <laughs> tasted some, I've tasted some great English whiskey. Okay, well, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah, I think whiskey, so many people obviously associate with Scotland, which is a great thing for, of course, you know, our small nation. And I think it's it's a very Scottish thing to be quite self-deprecating. But whiskey is a huge success. Yeah. Globally, it's an absolutely massive thing. But the last few years in particular, it's become much more than just Scotch. English whiskey, as you mm -hmm. say, has started to emerge. Yeah. Japanese whiskey is very, very sought Incredible. after. Um, yeah. You say it was one of the inspirations of the for, design of for the, the Sassanac, Sassanac definitely cocktail. you know looking at the blended uh, Japanese whiskies but I'm a huge fan of American whiskey as well okay. I love a rye I love that spice yeah. the dryness of it I'm really into that and Charlie obviously hugely experienced with with whiskey and Scotch whiskey in particular what is it about Scotland that makes such great whiskey is it it's kind of the, the atmosphere is it the weather is it the people the history the culture or is it all those things kind of it, it kind of all think? brings together the, the there's really no such thing as terroir as understood in okay. France mm -hmm. although the mm. for, historically there are, as you know there are regional differences yes. that have been discerned which can be over overrun but my friend and colleague Dave Broom mm. describes what he describes as cultural terroir where whiskey was made in a particular part mm. of the country became the way it had and then when blending took off in the I suppose the 1870s and 80s, um, the blenders were looking for styles of whiskey, distinct styles of whiskey, not only from regions, but from individual distilleries for their blends. And so there evolved this, um, the, 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 why any distillery, well, distilleries will make slightly different spirits and mature mm. in a slightly different way. Mm. And this, this, which historically was all for blending purposes, the sure. customer was the blender. Yeah. yeah, until really the 1990s, yeah, 80s, 90s, when malt whiskey began to take yeah. off. It's, and the, it's interesting um, how they, they sort of categorized it. Be yeah. Before, I imagine it was just people blending or, or producing all over Scotland. But then, yeah. then you had certain regions or distilleries, so they yeah. have one unique profile. Or Because, see, the, what they were looking for was consistency. And where, mm. where blended scotch, one of the reasons it took off was that it was consistent. Mm. Because the product of individual distilleries was mm. wildly inconsistent. Very little was bottled, um, well, hardly any bottle, but they're sold in, in bulk in stone jars or mm. little casks. Um, and, and only locally, malt whiskey before, well, so Glenfiddich started to promote itself in 1963, but it was really only in the in a small way in the 70s, growing in the 80s, when, people, when the, the brand owners, mm. the distillery owners, began to realize that they would, they, 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 they don't have to sell all their product to the blenders. Mm. They started to promote and then in the 90s, it's just taken off a big time. It, it's interesting because actually, I mean, we were slightly disparaging about the US here, but that's mm. only because it's a fledgling market. And I think mm. they are perhaps behind where Scotch was. And it's, you know, you look at the, the American malt, uh, single malt. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. only just sort of forming yeah, now. Tendency, so isn't it? so yeah. it's really exciting place to go to look at American uh, whiskey and see Certainly them is. starting to find their the areas and their regions yeah. and distilleries. And I think you know, in some ways, I was in Texas about a month ago, and the Waco at the uh, 
what do they call the distillery there? Um, oh, it's Balcones. Yes, the Balcones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was astonished that there's a whole culture of mm. Texas whiskeys now. There's about yeah. 15 or so. Texas whiskey, amazing. Yeah. I had some that had, still had so much charcoal in the bottle. Really? The charring. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I don't know if I should drink this. I know, it's going to make me ill. But, uh, yeah. It was amazing. But um, yeah, I mean, well, look, we're... we're Back in yeah. the what's, what's, yeah. what, what's yeah. the, game, the summary yeah. then is that whiskey is a global thing, but obviously Scotland well, for you well, is Scot- always going to well, have Well, Scotland, a I mean, a lot of, you know, Scots after Culloden, which goes back to my TV show after, mm. you know, around the 1700s, you know, they left and they went to Australia mm. and they went to Canada and America. So then we took, you know, a lot of these Scots went over there, or Irish went over there and then their process they're like well what's the grain i can use okay mm. let's use corn right sure. and yeah so so there is a lot of scottish and irish influence all around the world so i guess you know we're 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 lucky that uh, this this amazing spirit has traveled all around the Absolutely. world it's a huge huge success um should we try some whiskey i'd love so, to Name of the game today. We this have Texas whiskey. Ah, oh, you've ruined it. Oh, you've ruined the big, big reveal. <laughs> so we have two whiskeys in front of each of us. Um, one of them is Scotch whiskey, single malt Scotch. Mm-hmm. The other is single malt English whiskey. Ooh. Both whiskeys I've had. Both whiskeys I've enjoyed. Mm. Similar strength, similar sort of cask makeup. I suppose the only real difference is where it's made. Okay. So should we start whiskey on the left? I'd love to hear you. Start on the left. I'd love to hear you. We haven't drank too much whiskey, so we know which our left is. I know which is. Just (laughs) about. It's got a good colour on it. It's got a great colour. I know, know, a nice dark whiskey. It's a worse colour. That's what it suggests. It won't have been. A bit of age? It's. it's, Oh, it's very rich. It's. Because it's presumably quite young. But but nevertheless. Can neither confirm nor deny. Active. Active cask. And the. It could be European oak. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm getting... Is it, is it sort of tight and... Um, I don't know how to describe that. I'm getting, um, which I often associate with European oak, um, like malt loaf. Malt, okay. malt loaf. Yeah. So it's not exactly dried fruits, but it's sort of, sort of sticky malt loaf. Okay, okay. Um, these are both bottled at over 50%, so they are going to be quite hot, okay. I suppose. Um, on the nose, I think it smells quite good for you, Sam. It, what do it you does, think? yeah. And I'm, I, I'm trying to think of what you were saying there. It sort of reminds me of like a, like a I don't know, rich, like thick wood or walnut or something, sure. something very sure. um, slightly impenetrable. Like I would love to put water in here or just open it up a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. That would be a good idea, actually. Yeah, we'll get, we should we a, give it a little taste? A, a wee glass we'll taste. And then we'll, well, what I've, do they I've say tasted. in England? Uh, cheers? Yeah, yeah cheers, cheers, mate. Cheers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a good idea. Oh. There goes. First, Shall we stick first, with... yeah, first sip undiluted. Okay. What do you think? Tasty, but a little bit Very nice. fiery. Um, well, I, I don't know if I do find it that fiery. No, it's quite mellow. Mellow, mm. it's strong at the, on the, at, the, at the beginning and it disappears quite quickly. Yep, it's, it's warming. It's got a nice mid, medium length um, warming finish. It lacks a certain amount of depth, okay. I think. I agree. But, but it's it's heading all in the right direction. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, not a bad start, but maybe a little bit. It's not bad. Full, do you think? A little bit rougher in the edges. I agree. Lacking it, a bit of finesse potentially. It 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 it, it sort of packs a punch, and I think that's mm. probably the alcohol, and then there's okay. a, there is flavour mm. there, but it, it it quite quickly disappears, and, and I'm left with uh, alcohol like yeah. Um, like ethanol and yeah. mm. harshness. Okay. In terms of cask type, Charlie, what do you think? Is there anything? Well, I, I think it's American it, oak, it, maybe is, a sherry. Is it a single oak or is it a single a single cask or what? Uh, it is not a single cask. Well, I um, think it might be um, European oak ex sherry um, refill. Interesting. Yeah. So some of that those sort of, some of those guess. dried fruit flavors, but not dominating. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I'm and going it's not, it's not as yeah. tanic. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do. Whatever as well. he it's, said. Always, it's always a safe option. Yeah. If well, it's just not reliable. <laughs> but no, interesting. Yeah. It nicely opens up with a little bit of water. It does it? Yeah. It's still, I find with it doesn't need much water. Whiskies in general, just a couple of drops can change the complexion of it mm. entirely. Mm. Although when I'm just drinking, I put quite a lot of them generally speaking. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Misuwari, I think the uh, yes, Japanese yeah. call it. It's kind of similar to a highball, really, isn't it? No, I don't, I don't like highballs. Yeah. I don't like highballs. You don't like highballs? Oh, I can't be bothered. Oh, really? 
No, but, but although when I'm when I'm drinking at home, I'll put, you know, quite a lot. I'll tell you a story. The the um, the, the in, in, during the Raj in India, um, the the civil authorities sent out instructions that they, they talk about, as you may know, the peg is it? The pe yeah, ch chota peg and bara peg. Yes, ch ch chota peg is one finger and bara peg is two, two. fingers. Yeah. and the um, <laughs> the sarwas, the, which is the sort of gentry or officer class in a state called Patiala, um, so I thought this was ridiculous, and it was recommended that you'd have. There were two bara pegs before they used, they usually used to drink the, before mm -hmm. for dinner in the yeah. evening and the and early dinner, and the um, they thought these these gentlemen who were in, in the Punjab or whatever it was keen whiskey drinkers thought this was an absurdly small amount, so they went to the Raja of Fatiala, uh, wisdom of Solomon. He came up with the two finger the two finger measure. Like that. That's, that's amazing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you yes. that story. Well, that's one two, yes. The peg. I think it's a, it's a <laughs> it's lovely, a lovely idea. Little, uh, idea. And I actually found out recently about the noggin. Oh, no. Tell me about the noggin. The noggin, which was, um, and you, I actually bought some recently. The, the, it, was, uh, it was basically a measure to go to bed with. <laughs> To okay. put you to sleep, so you get your noggin, uh, you get yeah, your sleep. Yeah, yeah. And it was about three ounces, so maybe maybe a three finger sure. or a, a three finger. Um, <laughs> but yes, you can get these beautiful little decanters and they're, they're about the size of one oh, of these Glen King glasses. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah. And so you take this to your bed with your yes. noggin of whiskey yeah, yeah. and you sleep fitfully. Yeah. Or don't yeah, so, yeah, no, oh. sign me up. I yeah. know, so um, yeah, cool. I'd, I'd forgotten. Yes, they're, they're beautiful little little, That's right, little really, things. Yeah. Yeah. Little things. So overall, whiskey number one. Kind of. Do we give I, it a market ten? Hesitant thumbs up ring, maybe oh, six yes, or seven. Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah. Definitely thumbs, thumbs up. up. It's cool. Very easy to drink, and yeah. I think. Um, yeah. If it was a little bit older, it might be... Yeah, it's not boring. Yeah, it, 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 well, it's, going, it's going in the right direction, although the yeah. cask is very active. And so yeah. the, 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 I would watch it. You know, the, okay. the, this will be... It may be five years old now, but by the time it's seven or eight years old, it'll be over the top, yeah, mm. in the sense dominated by flavours from the wood, in my, in my view. Mm. Maybe may be yeah. entirely wrong. Um, we'll move on to whiskey number two then. Okay. Um, as I say, one of these is English, one of these is Scottish. We'll reveal at the end which is which. Um, on the nose, Ooh. is there anything distinctive wow. jumping so, out here? I'm getting a lot more. It's very interesting this one because it's it's again it's a dark whiskey, but it's it's all. Um, uh, They're similar vanilla. sort of age, all, actually. All, these all, two. all all all. I'm I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's very American oak. It's all caramel and okay. the. Uh, there's quite a lot of oak wood and the. Um, I just it it seems to have more on the nose. And almost kind of looks more. Maybe it's the light in here, but it just kind of looks more syrupy and mm, a bit more viscous. Yeah, and, viscous. Yeah, it does. Okay. But it's a very oak-driven. Okay. I mean, it's lost. You know, mm. you'll know, Sam. The, 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 we talk about distillery character and mature character, and ideally, you should retain the distillery character so that so that you can. Uh, and it could be modified and, right. and, uh, and, and expanded upon or rounded off by, by, by maturation. This is now already too far dominated by mm, yeah. flavors from the wood. Yeah. It's a delicious drink. It mm. is. But I think it's the, the casks are too active. It's almost as if it's, it's from a, a, a first fill, yeah. a, a virgin American oak cask. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do, yeah. So it's, it's edging towards, towards bourbon or rye. Yeah, mm. it, it is it's slightly over... Oh. Where this one is not quite there yet. This one has gone a little too far. Yeah, that, that's exactly that. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, a touch of water to dram to see if that opens up a little bit for you. I mean, it's sort of rounded and smooth and... Very. Honey-like and... Yeah. Um, a lovely lingering syrupy. finish. Without, I think often with smoky whiskies, you get that very big finish that stays with you. But yeah. I think these are both great examples of whiskies that stay with you, that have a lovely mouthfeel. They don't dissipate too quickly for me anyway. Do we get to choose um, where they're from? Should we pick favourites, Charlie? Whiskey um, one or whiskey two for you? I think whiskey one, but the, okay. the, the, the I'd mouth them both. Okay. But I do think that the, 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 the they're too cask-driven. The, okay, uh, interesting. Um, Makes sense. Actually. I haven't a clue, and nor could I begin to guess where they've come from. Interesting. So, mm. you know, was number to, one, to, Sam? To, be st to start with, the, 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 I, I thought whiskey two was better, but the... Mm. 
but I, I'll, I'll stick with whiskey one. Sure. I'm going to go for whiskey two. So okay. we're, we're, we're split here, but Good. I think it, it's more rounded, uh, has a more of a mouthfeel. It has certainly more mouthfeel. Um, the, the strength on both of them is, is staying with me, but it, it just, there's something more syrupy and honey yeah. like about okay. it. Um, I'm going to say it's Scottish. Can I say whiskey one? Oh no, have I made a mistake? Whiskey one is English. So, Charlie. Remove your whiskey crown. Oh. Give it to the new king of whiskey. Yeah. Sam Dune. Yeah. Whiskey two. It wasn't a fix. It yeah. is single malt no, scotch. Certainly not. It's a <laughs> fairly young. I won't reveal the name, but it's a West Coast mainland um, scotch distillery, uh, matured in a wine cask. I uh, think it might be first fill. So it's quite a, yes. num obvious. number two. It's not bad. No, whiskey number one is a single malt from Derbyshire. Mm. It's been finished in uh, a port the, cask. It, oh, so those kind of sherry, maybe slight refill sherry you're picking up on. Right. That's for me, not a million miles away from port. Um, but it shows whiskey doesn't need to be made in Scotland to be great. Um, but yeah, good fun to try whiskey blinds. Mm. <laughs> and, and actually really interesting to, to put two whiskeys next to each other because we I kind of rarely do that. You know, you go and order yeah. one at the bar or you, you buy a bottle, but actually when you get two quite similar, yeah. it's so interesting to then yeah. compare, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Really even with whiskeys that you know inside out, yeah. like something like, you know, Johnny Walker. Well, we were doing, we were doing Johnny Walker Black and Johnny Walker Double Black, mm -hmm. head to head. And it was very interesting because, as you say, you never, you never, you would never order two at the bar. You don't. Mm. Well, it I was, don't know. It was, yeah. <laughs> Depends if we finish these whiskeys or not. Yeah. Yeah. But no, really good fun. Cheers yeah, to that. Good. That Thanks good. for joining us, gents. So we pick, pick your favourite dram and we'll do cheers, cheers. To, to whiskey. Cheers to whiskey. And, and all success to your know, and many success. enterprises. An absolute yeah. honour to be with you both. Thank you. And, 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 Thank and you, you Laurie. And, and, and to you. English and Scottish whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Bevy content. We want to hear what you think, your best whiskey experiences, the whiskies you want us to try. It's a really exciting journey we're on, so make sure to join us. Download the Bevy app on Google Play and App Store to keep track of your whiskey journey, connect with your whiskey friends, keep track of your favourites, anything you could ever want to do with whiskey, all in one place. It's the definitive whiskey companion.